It was a dark and dreary night in World War I when an American soldier named Lee Duncan discovered an abandoned litter of puppies on a war-torn battlefield. Duncan rescued the puppies, keeping one male and one female pup for himself while giving the others away. He named the dogs Rin Tin Tin and Nanette after two good luck charms that he had received from a French child. When the war ended less than a year later, Duncan snuck the young dogs home with him, giving them to a breeder who specialized in training German shepherds to be police dogs. Unfortunately, Nanette would soon pass from pneumonia, and so Duncan adopted a replacement, Nanette the second, a fitting wife for his growing Ren Tin Tin. Growing up, Duncan had always preferred animals to people, and as PTSD from the war kept him reserved and out of the public eye, he spent time training Rin Tin Tin to compete in dog shows. It was a rough start for Rinty at first, but time and affection helped the dog grow to become a star. When one of these dog shows was filmed and Duncan saw Rinty on camera for the first time, he knew what must come next. Film. He would later write that he was so excited over the film idea that I found myself thinking of it night and day. Rinty's early film roles often saw him portraying a wolf, something that was done as an effort to work with trained dogs over actual wolves. But it wasn't until 1923, when Rinty was five years old, that he became a star. He starred in Where the North Begins, a huge success in the film that is often credited as saving Warner Brothers from bankruptcy. At the time, Warner Brothers was floundering, and when Rin Tin Tin brought in the money for the studio, they booked Duncan's dog for 24 more films. To Warner Brothers, Rinty was called the mortgage lifter, but to Duncan, he was his very good boy. Rin Tin Tin became an A-lister, booking advertisements for dog food, receiving fan mail by thousands. He even held the key to New York City, but he wasn't able to find much to use it for. Suddenly, every studio had their own Rin Tin Tin, like RKO, so that's the Wonder Dog. German Shepherds also exploded in popularity as pets, and Rin Tin Tin became one of the most common dog names in America. To Americans, Rinty was great, but his key to success came in how universal he was. To film viewers of any language, they could understand the actions of a dog. There was no need for subtitles. One Hollywood legend holds that Rin Tin Tin won the first ever Academy Award for Best Actor, but that the Academy secretly withheld that result to appear more professional. It sounds believable, but it's been proven untrue in the decades since. Wait a minute, wait a minute, you ain't heard nothing yet. As Rin Tin Tin grew older, his success began to diminish. He would die in 1932 at the ripe age of 14, but his films were already few and far between. Despite the fact that he saved Warner Brothers from bankruptcy, they had no use for the dog when sound films became the new normal over silent ones. According to Duncan, he found out that Renty would no longer be a Warner Brothers star through a letter, breaking off their contract in very succinct terms. We won't be needing Ren Tin Tin's services anymore because, as everyone knows, dogs don't talk. Ren Tin Tin died very quietly and happily, surrounded by his wife Nanette and his mini puppies. More than just a star, Ren Tin Tin was a father, husband, son, and friend to many and a private funeral was held in Duncan's backyard before Renty's body was sent to be buried in the pet cemetery in Paris. Still, the dog would live on. He was succeeded in films by Ren Tin Tin Jr., his son who acted in several movies in the 1930s before dying in 1941. He was followed by Ren Tin Tin III, who couldn't really uphold the family name, starring in just one movie in 1947. At that point, studios realized they didn't even need their German Shepherd to be related by blood to Rinty, and Rin Tin Tin IV was actually a dog named Flame Jr. Rin Tin Tin's bloodline is still going strong though, with Rin Tin Tin XII taking part in public events as a way to continue the legacy of this first film star. Beyond German Shepherd's successors, Rin Tin Tin also gave way to animals being treated better in films, and being treated as though they were stars themselves. A very good change if you ask me. 
And while most of Ren Tin Tin's films don't quite hold up as these hidden masterpieces of the silent era, it's nice to see a good boy getting love, even a century later. This is when the pictures got bigger, a channel focused on telling cinema's forgotten stories. And until the next time, I'll see you at the movies.